Welcome to Year Round Tree, the all year Christmas cast. Or Christmas all year cast? Christmas all year cast. I'm not going to be quiet the whole way. <laughs> was it ludicrous? Good. I, couldn't, I couldn't maintain that you at all. It's awful. keep a straight face through the whole thing. I was thing. thinking happy little trees, happy little Christmas trees. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, anyways, so this is Year Round Tree, episode two. I'm your host, Nikki P, here with my lovely wife and co host, Lizzie. What's up? We are here. I'm, I'm sipping on my little apple cider with a bunch of. Uh, Starlight mints tossed into the bottom of it, just trying to get as much sugar into my system as I can because keto's a bitch. It is, it is, and we're gonna have to get back there at some point. I'm rocking a little. I'm there right now. A little Swiss Miss with the peppermint schnapps. You see, that's how you do your peppermint. You gotta do it classy, like me. She just wants to get drunk. That's how she. (laughs) And um, I, I like your sweater today, Liz. Oh, thank you. You have a wonderful sweater. So. It's a an actual like skin tone sweater, which is funny because she's not like my skin tone. She's it's called dark. brown, dear. Okay, but anyways, <laughs> but it it's it, it has like a little Christmas tree popping out of the stomach, like that movie Alien. <laughs> it's, it's it's creepy. You know, I was just I wanted to keep it classy. <laughs> you know, there's a Christmas tree bursting out of your your your, your chest. <gasps> a little a little Christmas. Uh... What, what were those? They weren't face huggers. They were something else. Wasn't that the face hugger that climbed out? Or yeah, no, my... was it, or was it the xenomorph? Yeah, xenomorph. Little little Christmas xenomorph action. <laughs> always, always a winner. And you with the, uh, you got this crazy 70s cowboy jacket with the fringe, but the fringe is a uh, tinsel? <laughs> well, I like to tinsel everything. <laughs> I just wanted to feel like Neil Diamond. It just looks like something. I was going to say, I it looks like something most Neil of my would life wear. feeling like Neil Diamond, Liz. <laughs> I That's can't how blame this is you. supposed to work. I cannot blame you. So, anyways, we are here, as always, to talk about Christmas because Christmas is the shit. It is. <laughs> it is what In case I, you didn't know. Yeah. And if you're listening to this podcast, you probably at least like it. For this moment. Yeah. Maybe in the next couple of weeks. And that's that's what we're here for. You can binge, binge listen during the Christmas the, season. The beauty of this is that Christmas is going to be here and gone in another couple of weeks. Yep. And you and me are still going to be doing this. Oh, no. And th- I'm totally okay with that. And if you are that kind of crazy like us, you can totally stick around with us and enjoy Christmas yes. all year round. So what are we going to be talking about today, Liz? Uh, we are going to be talking about... A, a lovely little uh, Christmas flick. We're not, it's, are we calling it a flick? It's an episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Best <laughs> well, Gift Ever. I was going to mention that you can find it on a place where you look for flicks. You know, so we're I not thought it was a good thing. Like, we, we had a different idea for today, but we're going we're gonna to shelve that for probably another week. Yeah, no, this um, is awesome. I like this because I want to. I, eventually, we're going to go through every Christmas episode of every TV show ever. Oh, well, that, we I can mean, do this show you forever. Might as well start just based off of that. I'm totally okay with that. So if you're listening, yeah, just, please send please send requests for things please. that you'd like us to oh talk about. Oh my gosh, yeah. Anyways, this is a Christmas episode or hearthwarming, hearthwarming as they call it. As they call the, it, yes. My Little Pony Land. Because, you know, we're not going to get all specific and junk. Yeah. I Personally, I like My Little Pony. How do you feel about oh, My Little my, Pony? I love My Little Pony, and this episode got me like, I got the Christmas feels. I got a little bit clipped in there. I didn't know that they were still releasing episodes. This actually came out uh, in October of this year. Oh, good for them. 2018. I thought they gave up a couple years ago, but apparently I was wrong. Well, I mean, the movie I think did pretty well, so I can't imagine they would want to throw more money. I don't know how it did well. It looks stupid. At that, oh, the movie looked terrible. Oh, the it, movie it looked, was awesome. It looked about as good as oh, I don't know, all of the stupid Equestria Girls. Movies. I mean, there were a lot of singing. There was a lot of singing in it, but freaking Kristen Chenoweth was in it. Yes, she was. <sighs> I do like Kristen Chenoweth. I the do things like I like about Kristen, Kristen Chenoweth, I'm not seeing. You're not going to see it in a cartoon. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, that really bodes well for her in it. Um, hearts. <laughs> yeah. So this one does have at least two big musical numbers in it. Yeah. It does. The first one is actually really fun. I liked it. 
it's uh, it's kind of like jazzy. It's got a nice chord progression too. Um, the there's like a chorus where they're talking about box it, wrap it, like yeah, it's fun. It was nice, and it they had like a moment in there where there was a pony wrapping packages, it's like just w- being buried, and it's a one more <laughs> one more day until Christmas Eve, yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Like, oh, Hearthstone Eve. It's, it's the problem with that name is it's hard to say. Hearthwarming, yeah, hearthwarming Hearthstone whatever. doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Um, yeah, and how did you feel about the the joke about packages? In yeah, there? I, how many packages have you looked at this this winter? Uh, so far? Just countless numbers. Yes, I work at UPS. Of ridiculous amounts of packages. No, it's, no, this is one thing people don't realize. So if you work at UPS, like there's something sadomasochistic about Christmas shopping. <laughs> you know, you inevitably somebody. can't order things that you're not going to have to cause you more work. Yeah, there's that. Oh, Amazon. <laughs> So, <laughs> I did find it funny that the, uh, so we learned a few things in this episode that I didn't know. Okay. Uh, the first thing that pops up, I did not know Pinkie Pie was a gambler. Oh, okay. Yeah, do you, do you remember when they were talking about, like, she's like, ooh. Like, she got really excited about, you know, taking odds, and then she found out, oh, wait. That's not what I wanted to do. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Pinkie Pie was pretty extra all around in, in this, this whole story. No, I just think you haven't watched enough of the Maybe actual not, show. Pinkie Pie is always extra. Because I was a little like, whoa, okay, buddy. Yeah, no, no. That's Pinkie Pie. Right on. So, um, essentially what the whole episode is about is they decide to form a secret Santa because they all have too many friends to buy gifts for everybody. So right. why don't we all just pick get one person in the group and then we buy a gift for them? Right. And I've never seen a show where Secret Santa is the premise of the show. But they they did the dang thing. They did. They actually <laughs> did. And, oh, man, it's so funny. It's pretty awesome. Um, it, the thing that I like is that they found a way to give everybody their own little story and problem to overcome within the scope of the episode. Their arcs, like, yeah. It wasn't that they all had the same problem. Yeah. I mean, essentially, I guess, they all had the same problem in that none of them, I guess, some of, well, but even that is not true. Because... Um, Rarity knew exactly what she was going to get for. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, there's another problem that presents itself right. in there that was fun. Yeah. Um, But, you know, everybody else kind of got their own little issues. Oh, yeah. The thing I really liked about this episode was all the ancillary characters that it yeah, brought in. Yeah, they kind of brought a lot of people in that we are like, oh, that guy! Flim, the Flim Flam brothers come back and oh, s- are hawking garbage because that's what the Flim Flam brothers do. Like, what else would they do? Yeah. And Discord, what? <sighs> yeah, no, Discord is... I, I'm going to be honest, the fact that there's not a Discord spinoff show for me makes me hate life. I bit. imagine John Delancey just doesn't want to work that much, but the fact that John Delancey is still working just does warm my heart. Just, oh. I get to I get to hear Q when I watch that show. Down the the best still part doing a thing. about Discord is he just uh, I we talk, were talking about this earlier. He is essentially still Q, mind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so what is Q? Q is basically for all those people that aren't oh that Q fucking dorky is a is a character from Star Trek: The Next Generation who's uh, omnipotent. He, he has he's like, an omnipotent, irascible scamp. Yes, and he just shows up and makes trouble in the Enterprise by like poofing things into existence and out of existence, and then he leaves. Yeah, sounds like a, sounds like my kind of character. It's, yep, pretty much. That's why I like Discord. Yeah. We were talking about. I think what's really funny about Discord to me is that Discord. He's not bad, but he points out like the shortcomings in others, and like how their perceptions of people mess things up. Yeah. Um, he basically says he just calls them on their crap. Yeah. No, and that's exactly it. Like. <laughs> You pretend that we're friends, but you don't trust me. Yeah. And it's going to cause problems for you. But if you trusted me, this would all go down differently. Uh-huh. Or maybe it wouldn't. Maybe it would still be messed up, but that's fun. Oh, goodness. <laughs> At any rate. So I think there's a whole story arc where Discord and Rainbow Dash are looking for a present for Fluttershy. Right. You know. Um, and, and it goes as you'd imagine that would go, probably. <laughs> Yeah, so what's really funny is that uh, the, the the Spike storyline in this. Oh, the feels. Spike 
spends half the episode trying to trade ponies with somebody because he wants to get rarity so he can get something special for rarity. And eventually he ends up getting rarity's you know name from Fluttershy. The the problem is like he goes through a whole half an episode like trying to get rarity and then he realizes oh shit <laughs> I don't know what to get rarity. <laughs> He just so he funny. knew he knew that he wanted to do something special, having no idea what that special thing was going to be. <laughs> he was just all focused on the pony and not thinking about the actual process. It was it was hilarious. Um, they they introduced some new characters I liked. Yeah, Aurora, Bori, oh, Alice. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> I believe were described as this is what I think really liked him. They were. They were the gift givers of the Grove, they called themselves. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. And they end up, like, the best, funniest thing ever. <laughs> so Discord's... The whole storyline kind of spins in such a way that they just... Basically, it's a deus ex machina. Like, all of a sudden, exactly the thing to solve the problem appears. But, you know. Yeah. And instead of calling it a deus ex machina... <laughs> Discord calls it a reindeer ex machina, <laughs> which works too. Yeah, so the, these these gift givers of the grove, you think for you, you swear up and down like as Pinkie Pie goes through Yak Yakistan looking for a gift and he gets a map to the gift givers' place, the best gift givers in the world, because the only thing apparently the yaks aren't good at is giving gifts, <laughs> which is hilarious. They're great at everything else, can't give gifts though. <laughs> so she gets there, and there's a bunch of crazy reindeer that immediately know who she is. So you find out that like one of them can see everything that's ever happened, one of them sees into the future, and and then they they give her a, a box and kind of. Well, it's like the um, <laughs> the Christmas Carol. It's the past, present, future. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So she gets a box and it's a present. You get back to Ponyville. Well, they don't tell you what's in the box. Yeah, they, she he know what's in the box. What's in the box? <laughs> what's in the box? Wrong holiday. Yeah. Okay. So you got all these different things going on. Twilight is, is Twilight Sparkle is trying to make this perfect magical pudding for Pinkie Pie. Um, Rarity ordered this special hat for. You know, ran for uh, Applejack, and you get to this whole thing. Literally, every single one of them shows up, like, and, and it's it's screwed up. Yeah. Discord talks Rainbow Dash into getting this cute little chinch w- winter chilla. It's called it's like a little chinchilla that turns into a winter zilla. It turns into a giant that eagle. That makes tons of sense. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be funny, and it is super. Oh, it's super hilarious! Funny. Okay, so at the end of this whole thing, you get them back, and the final, like the whole, the finale is they're stuck in like Tw- Twilight Sparkle's castle, and on one side they've got this giant rodent Zilla. And on the other side, they have the pudding that's become sentient and attacking them <laughs> and taking up the entire castle. Okay. As magical pudding would. Yes. And Discord's being Discord, just laughing his butt off the whole time. <laughs> and what ends up happening? The whole thing was just a ploy by Discord to get Fluttershy the perfect gift. Yeah, yeah. Which is yeah. that Fluttershy for once gets to be the hero. And there you go. She ends up calming down the winter Zilla. As only she can. And Pinkie Pie happens to take that gift that she got from the gift-giving people, and it happens to be the exact ingredients needed to make the perfect pudding. Yep, for Rainbow Dash. To get the proportions correct to make it perfect and not kill her. (laughs) Yep. (sighs) Yes, it is a heartwarming tale of ponies. Of ponies and heartwarming Eve. <laughs> With a heartwarming Eve miracle, that really... And they worked in a lot of a lot of characters in there, though. So it was fun. Been... It was really fun. I enjoyed it. I was surprised. I'm never surprised. Well, I'm, I mean, they just... I, I'm i always impressed with how much story they fit into, like, what was it, 40-some-odd 40, 40 minutes? Was it? Yeah. I, mean, it did, I knew it was longer than, like, a standard episode, but I wasn't sure how long. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even an hour, and they crammed a lot of stories. It's on the Discovery Channel? 
I have no idea. Maybe. According to Wikipedia? Fair enough. That's weird to me. I mean, Discovery Channel does a lot of stuff that wouldn't have been on the Discovery Channel when we were kids. Like, I feel like it was just nature documentaries back in the day, and now it's... Was it like the Brothers Kratz and stuff back in the day? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. So... Anyways, yep. folks, nice short little episode talking about <laughs> yeah. my little <laughs>